Assalamu alaikum. Majesty, Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm very happy to be the first youth who speaks after all of the adults. My name is Muhammad al-Jindi and I was born in Syria. When I was 12, I had to free Syria with my family. I arrived in Lebanon and I could not go to school for two years. My parents didn't have much money left and there were not enough places in the Lebanese schools. I remember checking the school every day whether they had a place available, but with no success. I hated that I could not go to school, so I built one. I wanted to make sure that the Syrian children could continue their education. For this, I won the International Children's Peace Prize 2017. It has been seven years since the start of the conflict in Syria. Since then, until now, we as an international community and influentials have failed to protect the Syrian children. But do you wonder why a 17 years old guy is telling you this, or how, or, or how I even know this? Because I was one of them. I was one of the children who needed protection. I was one of the children who witnessed his own people getting killed in all the ways possible and being displaced from Syria, who could not find a chance to live a normal life or even go to school. And I know that we failed when the end, when the end of 2017, 43% of the Syrian children living in Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, and Iraq were not receiving an education. The total number of Syrian children out of school nowadays is not decreasing, but going up. Last year, uh, last week, I visited Lebanon and Jordan with the Kids' Rights Foundation to talk to the children and young people who, like me, have fled Syria. I wanted to talk with them about their lives and in the, in the new country they live in. I wanted to know more about the obstacles the Syrian refugees' children face if they want to go to school and what their op opinions are about the education they receive if they are lucky to be in school. I know we failed because I heard from a lot of children in Lebanon that they have been out of school for a very long time and still are not going to school. I spoke to Nasreen who could not go to school because her parents did not have enough money to send her to school. Ali wanted to continue his education after arriving in Lebanon but there were not enough places in the school in his area. And then Samira, she had such a hard time following the classes in English, a language she didn't know, and without, and without a support, she just could not catch up anymore, so she dropped out. After Lebanon, I moved to Jordan, where I have spoken to many children who are afraid to go to school because they don't feel accepted by other children, because they are refugees. I know we failed when Omar, at 13 years old, who lives in Jordan, told me my teachers and other students physically and verbally abused me. If I let them decide my future, then why should I have one? I know we failed because the children told me they consider being hit by adults just part of our culture. That is normal, that it can't be changed. What do the children learn if they are scared? What do you learn if you are scared? Nobody can learn new things when their surroundings are not safe. These are important messages from real children. They tell us more about the 43%. The story is needed to be heard and shared to create a solution. Children in Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt need more schools buildings, more trained teachers, and more opportunities for their parents to earn income but more funding alone does not bring more children to school if nobody monitors what is happening inside those schools and children feel not safe. I am here at the, at the laureates and leader summit with Mustafa, who also lived in Lebanon as a refugee, with Samira and Sidra, who live in Jordan. All four of us had fled from Syria. And we all know very well how it is to live in another country that you don't know, 
to see your parents struggle, to stop dreaming about the future because you have no idea how it will look like, to be treated differently just because you're a refugee, to watch your own people getting killed until now by your regime like al Ghuta. But we also know very well how much we are motivated to make something of our lives. And I know that those Syrian children and children all over the world want to fix things that are broken. Now, you know why I believe that we as an international community have failed? I don't, ha I don't, I don't have the solution to the conflict in Syria. You may not have it either. But we should not stop thinking about the main cause of the problems Syrian children face. Because we all believe in peace. And peace is what the children of Syria are dreaming of now. As Ms. Kennedy mentioned, at the end of April, world leaders will meet in Brussels to discuss their support of Syria. I ask all of you today to support the statement that Kate Wright and I have prepared so we can urge the people that we will meet in Brussels to make education a priority. Thank you.